Two Weather Channel storm chasers run over 80 stop signs, four red lights, and it ends in the tragic deaths of three people. You're about to see and hear what could be the details of the biggest scandal ever at the Weather Channel. New details have surfaced after the Weather Channel was hit with a $125 million lawsuit alleging that two Weather Channel storm chasers on March 28, 2017 ran a stop sign at at least 70 miles per hour, resulting in the death of 25-year-old Corbin Lee Yeager in the town of Spur, Texas. In the shocking details in the lawsuit, if they are true, could prove to be one of the biggest scandals in the Weather Channel's history. If these shocking details are true, it is time to boycott the Weather Channel to send them a clear message that this kind of behavior is unacceptable and it's dangerous to the public. In the town of Spur, Texas, on March 28, 2017, two Weather Channel storm chasers, Randall Yarnall and Kelly Williamson, are driving a suburban SUV. They blow through a stop sign at at least 70 miles per hour, resulting in the tragic death of 25-year-old Corbin Lee Yeager. Corbin had the right away. According to the lawsuit, Yarnell and Williamson had a long history of reckless driving when it came to storm chasing for the Weather Channel, and it was well known among other chasers and even the Weather Channel. The Weather Channel had been warned by other storm chasers on several occasions before Corbin's unfortunate death. Yarnell and Williamson's driving put others at risk, and the Weather Channel had even witnessed this because they were streaming live feeds back to the Weather Channel studio for a show called Storm Wranglers. On their own YouTube storm chasing channel, Yarnell and Williamson demonstrated time and time again their total disregard of basic traffic safety laws. In just 14 of the 223 videos posted to their YouTube channel, the pair can be seen running at least 80 stop signs, four red lights, and at least one out of service traffic light. The lawsuit presents pretty damning details of times when the reckless behavior was actually broadcasted on the Weather Channel. In the final video before Corbin's death, Williamson can be seen running at least four stop signs. They would frequently drive at high speeds in severe thunderstorm conditions with heavy rain, large hail, and poor visibility, a time when traffic conditions are already dangerous. The lawsuit also presents pretty damning details, suggesting that the Weather Channel actually encouraged this reckless behavior, which ultimately led to this tragic event. The lawsuit presents strong evidence that the Weather Channel paid for equipment, sponsored, had them on the air, gave them directions as to where to go, what to do, who to interview, and that this was regularly occurring, and that Williamson and Yarnell regularly told people this was their employer, was listed on their Facebook page, in all their documentation, in their videos, and you could also see pictures and videos on various channels where they're actually wearing Weather Channel gear, and at the time of this tragedy, you can obviously see some Weather Channel decals on the vehicle. Ironically, the lawsuit also details how Williamson and the Weather Channel had been discussing liability and insurance. The lawsuit makes a strong case that Williamson and his partner were not experienced storm chasers. They were not meteorologists. They didn't know what they were doing. They were regularly driving dangerously. They had no first responder training, and they were unprofessional as they were employed by the Weather Channel, using Weather Channel equipment, regularly had communication and direction from the Weather Channel, had insurance from the Weather Channel, regularly streamed to the Weather Channel and its Facebook, including Live on the Air, and for its special program, Storm Wranglers, makes the case that the Weather Channel and its subsidiaries are therefore responsible for the wrongful death. Just minutes before blowing through a stop sign at over 70 miles per hour, Williamson can be heard communicating business with the Weather Channel. Business was ongoing at the time of this tragic event. There seems to be strong evidence that at the time of this tragic event, and while blowing through 80 other stop signs, that Williamson and his partner were conducting business on behalf of the Weather Channel. The plaintiff in this case presents strong evidence that the Weather Channel was notified several times, even high-level people at the Weather Channel, of Williamson and his partner's reckless behavior. The Weather Channel was fully aware and had been warned by third parties that their storm wranglers engaged in reckless driving before this tragedy. In one instance, another storm chaser, who had also been featured on the Weather Channel on multiple occasions and knew Williamson and Yarnell personally, had exchanged a series of text messages. 
with a producer for Storm Wranglers, as well as a meteorologist for the Weather Channel, on December 4th of 2016, approximately four months before the tragic event. The text message reads, As far as Storm Wranglers, I understand the need, in fact, for dumbing down for the general public. But I'm going to be honest here, and I hope you take no offense at what I'm going to say, please. The fact of the matter is that you have two very inexperienced new and uneducated chasers. Talk about liability. See where I am going with this? I am not going to badmouth Kelly, but I'm not going to lie either. On March 4th of 2017, just 24 days before Corbin was killed, the Weather Channel had aired a segment showing Williamson going over 90 miles per hour, trying to reach a storm. Mike Chesterfield was at the time of Corbin's death and is currently a director, executive producer, and a managerial employee of the Weather Channel. Later that day, on March 4th of 2017, a storm chaser had told the Weather Channel, quote, Doing 90 miles per hour to get to the position he was is just asking for bad stuff and showing or talking about it on his live stream. I just hope he truly understands the risks associated. We are just hoping he doesn't get hurt or hurt anyone else. The lawsuit argues that the Weather Channel and its subsidiaries are financially responsible for Corbin's wrongful death. These are all very disturbing details, but there's an even more disturbing revelation in the lawsuit. A storm chaser had been the first on the scene, even before emergency personnel. Upon his arrival, he immediately contacted the Weather Channel to notify them that one of their vehicles was involved in the collision, which he could easily deduce by virtue of the large TWC logo on the Suburban. He also recognized Williamson on the side of the road, was being administered CPR. This witness immediately notified Jim Cantori, an extremely well-known on-camera meteorologist and television personality for the Weather Channel. Shortly after doing so, while this witness was speaking to a police investigator at the scene, he received a phone call from a woman who claimed to be affiliated with the Weather Channel. The woman told him, quote, You've got to get the cameras. Get the cameras. End quote. The individual responded that he would do no such thing, and the call ended. However, minutes later, he received a second phone call from a male subject who also claimed to be affiliated with the Weather Channel. This male subject also told him, quote, Go get the cameras. End quote. Moments later, another person at the accident scene approached this individual and stated that he too had received a call from the Weather Channel with instructions to grab the cameras. The individual told this person not to take the cameras and that it was a crime scene. Was the Weather Channel being so shallow, greedy, and heartless that in the middle of a tragic event when CPR is going on, a fatal traffic accident, their only priority is to get the video and get it on the air? Or was it something more sinister, to tamper with evidence, to prevent evidence that would point towards them? Any liability, any responsibility. Either way, if any of these details are true, the reckless behavior of these specific storm chasers and the behavior of the Weather Channel is unacceptable, and nobody should support this. In another bizarre video, the two can be seen driving around a neighborhood after a tornado damages it and they have absolutely no idea what they're doing, no first responder training, and it seems like their only priority is to get an interview for the Weather Channel. In fact, they pick up two injured people who didn't initially know they were being broadcast to the world as they sat in the back seat. You can see in this video that one of the passengers was clearly in pain. He thought he broke a couple of ribs and his leg. Yet Williamson's priority seems to be to get the interview for the Weather Channel. Williamson and his partner can be seen driving around several disaster scenes with no formal emergency first responder training and seemingly a top priority to get video, to get an interview. I'm not injured. Yeah. All right, man, I'll meet you there, man. Look for us. All right, just meet for As far as we got. You want to talk to the Weather Channel? Yeah. Do you? Okay, here, put this on right here. Uh, you gonna do an interview with him real quick? Tornado warning for Southern Choctaw County in southwestern Alabama. Williamson and his partner can be seen driving through several disaster scenes, sometimes in the middle of night, 
with debris everywhere, roads blocked, emergency officials trying to do their job, power lines okay, down, yeah, and they had absolutely no emergency first responder training, and it seems their top priority wasn't to help people, it was to get video, it was to get interviews for the Weather Channel. Okay, I'm here. Okay, okay, you're gonna have to do it quick. Here, you gonna put this on, and you can talk to them. That's good. If you can. Hello. Hey, ma'am. But they, sometimes you'll hear music. As long as you hear music, you're good. They'll. Yes. They'll, um, my name. Kind of take some big deep breaths there, ma'am. It'll help a little bit if you just kind of take some big deep breaths. Uh, not doing too good right now, ma'am. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, ma'am, I can hear you. I'm in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and a tornado came over us. Uh, where, where, where we were, the shelter wasn't wasn't meant for us, so we got out of there, and uh, we got again against a, a, a building, a, a brick wall, and the, 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 the brick wall fell down on us. These are only some details, and it's enough to know that something's wrong, that we need to take action, that we need to stand up. We need to start asking some questions. Why did the Weather Channel hire these people? Why were untrained, unprofessional people allowed to continue a business relationship with the Weather Channel? Is the Weather Channel promoting reckless behavior? Should we be defending anyone that runs 80 stop signs? Is a tornado or thunderstorm video worth running a stop sign and killing an innocent person so the Weather Channel can get ratings? And one final question. What if? What if that was your son? What if that was your daughter, your brother, your sister, someone you love? Was it worth it? And will you do something about it? Maybe it's time to boycott the Weather Channel.